Hello everyone and welcome to Fist Chat, the podcast that features discussions on the topics of film, science and technology. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined once again by my good friend, colleague and scientist who's about to debunk a whole bunch of urban myths, we think. Steve Kern, how are you doing there, Steve? Hi Ben, I'm, I'm well. I'm not sure we're going to debunk any myths. In fact, uh, if I had my way, I'd probably like to uh, throw in a few extra. Out oh, well, well, we'll look at that at the uh, towards the end, I think. That'll be most most interesting. Um, so, <laughs> so don't forget, our um, vodcast is available at www.fistchat.com. Um, you can get all our social media links there, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, it's all there. Interact with us, leave comments, questions, um, and we'll uh, get back to you. Um, and I should also note, this is uh, the first attempt at recording this vodcast without any uh, cameras. So... Um, if you're successfully watching this or listening to us now, then it means we've succeeded and we may do this um, in the future. I can tell you, Steve, it's a lot easier to set up um, without all the tripods and such. Well, that, that's right. I mean, uh, when you say without any cameras, you mean without any uh, video cameras, I guess. We're using uh, digital straight into... Oh, uh, you're saying, I, could, I mean, you know, the elegance of the Mac hardware, I can't even tell there's a, there's a camera on the thing. Oh, it's that green light. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, we're, we're big fans of Mac here, and uh, thank God they made it possible. Absolutely. All right. Um, now let's have a look. Uh, we're going to talk about um, some <laughs> funny little uh, <laughs> science stories that uh, we popped up uh, recently, and uh, we'll start with the atom splitter because um, that made me laugh right off the the belt. Because you know, um, you you, you just want to do this in the comfort of your own home. Um, now, a Swedish man was arrested after trying to split atoms in his kitchen and says he was only doing it as a hobby. Apparently, he had radioactive elements, radium, America, was it americium, and uranium in his apartment in southern Sweden when police showed up and arrested him on charges of unauthorized possession of nuclear material. Um, he kept a blog about his experiments, describing how he created a small meltdown on his stove, and uh, only later did he realize that it might not be legal, uh, and he sent a question to the to Sweden's radiation authority, which answered by sending in the police. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> you can't really get get much better than that. But I mean, you know, how feasible? I mean, is this to you know to do in your your home? I mean, can you? Is it would it be costly or uh, you know? Let's let's leave the legal um, side of it out of it. Okay, let's. Leave the legal side out of it. And the other thing is, uh, this may be part of an ongoing urban myth, okay? okay. And, and you can look these up online. There's one about the American boy who builds his own reactor, etc., etc., and finishes in a very similar way. Having said that, though, uh, let, let's face it. You know, if you want to make a nuclear reactor, all you really need to do is get hold of some radioactive uh, uh, isotopes and uh, pack them together really tightly. Hmm. And, uh, what happens then is you get a... Uh, a nuclear decay, and that decay, uh, you know, creates energy. There's a release of energy mm. that that uh, tends to make things hot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if if you were in in a really sort of anecdotal sort of way, if you were to get enough of this material, stick a kettle on top of it, perhaps filled with water, that water would boil, absorbing the heat. And then, uh, like, if you had a little uh, turbine, you could spin that and you could generate some electricity. So, uh... <laughs> well, there you go. There's, uh, there's an argument for um, having, uh, you know, self, uh, self-generated self electricity. Forget the solar panels. Just uh, go with your nuclear reactor. <laughs> Look, what a great hobby. Oh. You'd be learning about uh, science at the same time, nuclear science. I yeah. mean, uh, there are a few riders on this, but overall, there's no reason why you couldn't do this and there's no reason at all why these stories aren't true yeah because because if you really wanted to you you could do you could do these things that the, these <laughs> gentlemen have purported to have blogged on uh, that is of course unless you want the police uh, knocking at your door well uh. that, that's kind of where it gets a bit uh, whether or not the stories are true i mean you need to get the right sort of isotopes to create your own nuclear reactor just getting anything mm. that's radioactive isn't necessarily, uh, you know, what you want. You probably want a, a gamma sort of uh, radiator. Yeah. You know, you probably would want some uh, uranium or uh, American, you know, you would want something along those lines. But having said that, I mean, you don't want to be handling that stuff. 
No. <laughs> that, that, that seat. You don't want to be handling it on the kitchen stove. Not no. if you're cooking there later on. That, that's no good. No. Um, okay, well, let's broaden this out a bit because um, there was a, sort of a side sort of story that we saw um, and it's uh, a study done on Australians, but uh, the articles also re um, refer to a couple of other countries where um, similar studies have been done and the idea of uh, people being uh, duped by um, science fiction. Um, and uh, apparently lots of people um, are... Um, sort of take in what they see in science fiction movies and believe that they're real. Um, uh, just for example, um, you know, uh, more, apparently more than three quarters of Australians believe microscopic life has been found on other planets and almost half believe humans can be frozen and thawed back to life despite neither being true, yet, I guess, at this stage. Well, they're, they're both great topics. The one about uh, life being found on other planets, that could be a little bit confusing because it has been talked about life on Mars. Uh, uh, and, and remnants of what could have been life in, in meteorites or mm. fragments of, uh, of rock, but there's no proof yet. Yeah. The likelihood is, and the scientific leaning is, is that life on Earth may well have been generated by, uh, you know, in the depths of outer space. Yeah. Uh, you know, but we don't know that for sure. But, you know, very often when the media jumps on the story, it says, well, there's life in outer space and then everyone gets really excited because we want to believe there's life in outer space. You know, we want to believe that yeah. you know, Luke Skywalker and uh, Han Solo are, are somewhere out there protecting people just like us from the evil empire. <laughs> <laughs> and what about uh, thawing people back to life? Do you, well, what do you reckon this, about this one? Well, this is the, this is the huge one, you know, with uh, cryogenic storage and uh, mm. there's all sorts of rumours of people from Walt Disney right through to, uh, you know, a whole host of uh, millionaires. Probably Bill Gates has signed up to be frozen, you know, just before he dies because you don't actually want to be dead. Yeah, that's right. I think Mr. Burns is in there as well. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and the thing is, is that uh, if, you really, if you really want to make a fortune in medical science uh, and, and change humanity, you would be the person who could work out how to unfreeze people. There's no problems with freezing people, okay? You can snap freeze people, bang, just like they snap freeze uh, frozen peas and vegetables at the supermarket. The problem is, and you can do this at home with a lettuce leaf, pop it into the freezer, yeah. freeze it, and then let it thaw on the sink. And we all know what happens, it turns to mush. And that's what happens to humans. When you snap frozen at minus 196 in liquid nitrogen, that's fine. But it's only just as you approach zero, again, zero degrees as they're warming you back up, mm. what happens is ice crystals actually form. And the ice punctures every cell in your body and turns you to mush. Which and would be unfortunate, I would think. <laughs> you work out a way to get a little bit of antifreeze into every cell, which couldn't be good for you anyway. No. <laughs> um, there's no way they can bring you back. So freezing is no problem. But they might have to freeze you for 10,000 years <laughs> to safely bring you back. Yeah, absolutely. Good one to come in, eh? <laughs> well, you know, the, who knows if the planet will still be there based on uh, our current behaviours and whatever else or whatever, you know, maybe an asteroid might have uh, blown up somewhere or uh, who knows. <laughs> well, so, yeah, uh, 10,000 years is a, is a long time to be waiting frozen. And, uh, you know, the second law of thermodynamics, you know, states that everything goes from order to chaos. So if we think things are bad on the road now, you can imagine what they're going to be like in 12,000 and 12 AD. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get past 2012 first. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. All right, let's, well, I, I love some of these other ones too. I mean, we've got... Um, uh, only one quarter of respondents were aware that it is possible to grow an eye in a dish, um, although 44% correctly believe flying cars exist. Well, flying cars do exist. <laughs> <laughs> but what about this other one, the, uh, the one with growing an eye in a dish? Well, uh, I actually don't know that myself. Yes, you could grow an eye in a dish. Mm. Is it going to work? I'm not sure about that. I mean, you could grow an eyeball in a dish for sure. These days with um, stem cell cultures and, and also tissue cultures, it is possible to regenerate tissues completely and they've had yeah. enormous success now 
with actually uh, scaffolding uh, organs and, and um, tissues onto actual structure, which could be replacement parts. No. So, I, I mean, an eyeball, I'm not sure what sort of eyeball they mean. There's certainly, I've not heard of any human eyeballs being grown in dishes ready to, ready pop. to pop into someone's head. But uh, <laughs> we're not that far away from those two things. That, that is one thing I will give that, uh, you know, a little bit of credibility in the story for, though. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure that it's that that's how or why that's happening. I should probably check that up. If anyone out there knows anything about it, tweet us. Absolutely. All right, so um, maybe we can uh, start to slowly wrap things up with... Uh, you, do you have um, a couple of uh, urban myths of, uh, of your own that you'd like to uh, share, Steve? Well, there, there are lots of uh, <laughs> urban myths uh, that are good ones. You know, everything from, uh, I guess, the uh, exploding in a vacuum in space uh, myth, which is perpetrated by uh, Schwarzenegger in... Uh, what was it? Was it not true lies? What was the other? It was a total recall. Total was recall. It? Yeah. You know, when he uh, falls out at the end and starts to expand in, in the Martian atmosphere. Uh, <laughs> you know, right through to uh, I think the you know, we only use ten percent of our brains, when in fact we use all of our brains. We just use ninety percent of mm. them very poorly ninety percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Do you have any, Ben, or...? Uh... Uh, not that I can think of off the top of my head, but um, it's just um, it's just fascinating when I hear this stuff. And um, I think, like, I guess, you know, putting my film hat on, it kind of sort of resonates on the science fiction level, but how, ha I guess, I mean, it'd probably be a bit unfair to, you know, say that most a lot of science fiction doesn't really have, you know, a lot of good science in it. But um, if it's presented well, it can kind of get away with um, being... Um, you know, representative of the truth, even if um, even if it's not. Um, I mean, you know, have a look at any good uh, you know Roland Emmerich uh, film, and uh, you know he's famously uh, been uh, you know annoying um, scientific advisors for years because um, you know he'll throw good science out, at, you know, because he doesn't want it doesn't want to um, have, be at the expense of good story. Um, you know, the, I mean, it's totally believable that in, you know, um, that last movie did, um, yes, yeah, 2012, I think. And, uh, you know, um, it's totally feasible that the planet could be microwaved from the inside out, um, you know, but it works perfect for, uh, you know, the drama and all that sort of thing. Um, and I think it's just important to remember that science, there's the word fiction in science fiction. So, um, but for me, I think uh, my favourite forms, I think, um, you know, moving alongside of that is when you get these films that um, actually show how, you know, something that's really plausible even if it doesn't exist um, at this point. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I completely agree with you. I think imagination is very important in science and, you know, uh, the whole idea of, uh, you know, looking forward with vision because that's how the greatest advances have been made uh, for human society, I think. But, you know, it's important that people remember that uh, just because you heard it, like, you know, there's life in outer space or people think there might be, don't take for granted. You know, a bit like the eyeball. I mean, go and check it out. There are all sorts of amazing uh, discoveries being made and, and all sorts of amazing advances for technology happening all the time. And it's, it's, you know, very often, even though we hear about them and they haven't happened yet, they're usually, you know, maybe only 10 or 20 years away from uh, taking apart, you know, our, our everyday life. Mm. I mean, it wasn't so long ago we thought we'd never be able to cure paralysis, for instance. Uh, but we are getting close and closer to, to curing what we used to think was incurable. But it's very important that people take the time to do the research. And that doesn't just mean Googling something. It means actually looking into it, finding reputable sources and exploring the science behind it. Even sometimes the most complicated things, sometimes it can be explained quite easily. And there are a lot of people out there who do a great job of uh, explaining some of the tricky things in science so we can all share and understand them. Absolutely. And just to finish up on uh, one final point and bring us back to the beginning of the episode, don't try splitting uh, atoms at home. Uh, leave that to the uh, professionals. And if you want uh, extra sources of power, get the solar panels. <laughs> Much better. And honestly, if you do get your hands on any radioactive uh, stuff, just, just leave it. Absolutely. Call the authorities, hand it in. You don't want to play with that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, thanks again uh, for the chat, Steve. Um, it was amusing, and we'll uh, 
um, look forward to next week. So, um, so yeah, once again, uh, our vodcast is at www.fistchat.com. Uh, we'll be back again next week. So until then, have a good week.